So, Secretary General, thank you very much for the agreement to talk to us. So, I would like to start from at that point that uh, NATO allies claim that they are ready to support Ukraine as long as it takes. Uh, 13 months later, what are the main challenges allies are facing providing Ukraine with military assistance? Well, the main challenge is, of course, that this, this uh, war now has become a war of attrition, uh, which means a battle of logistics. It's about getting uh, uh, ammunition, weapons, uh, supplies to the front lines. Um, and, uh, and in the beginning, we were depleting our own uh, stocks. Uh, uh, but of course, there's a limit for how far we can do that. So now we're also working hard to uh, ramp up production so we can ensure that we can continue uh, to support Ukraine. Uh, uh, because this is extremely important uh, to continue to do so. It will be a tragedy for Ukraine if President Putin wins, but it's also dangerous for NATO allies. And that's my message to all allies is that we should support Ukraine because it is in our security interest to demonstrate that President Putin doesn't win in, uh, in Ukraine. According uh, to your assessment, uh, how would you estimate the current situation at the battlefield and uh, how the fight, particularly for Bakhmut, for Avdiivka, for example, affected both sides and continues to affect, I mean, Ukrainian armed forces and Russian ones? So first of all, I think we have to once again, or I would like to once again uh, express my admiration, my... my, my uh, how, how impressed I am by the quality, the courage, the, the determination of the Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, they have impressed the whole world. Um, and uh, w what we see is that the Russian troops, uh, uh, they, there's low morale, the, uh, the equipment is often bad, uh, training is, is not very impressive, um, uh, leadership uh, is, 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 uh, is not really working in, in many of the operations. Um, so, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, what we see is that what the Russian troops uh, lack in uh, quality, they try to make up in quantity. So they are throwing in thousands of thousands of troops, many of them ill-equipped, uh, uh, ill-trained. Uh, uh, but of course, this causes damage, uh, and they are able to inflict also casualties on the uh, Ukrainian uh, side. Um, the, the Russians are losing many more soldiers because they just, just uh, don't have the quality uh, or leadership uh, equipment as the, as the Ukrainians. Uh, but it, it also means that we should not underestimate Russia uh, because they have demonstrated this will to, 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 to throw in tens of thousands of new troops. For me, that's just another argument for us providing Ukraine support, helping Ukraine to liberate land and to push back the, the Russian invaders. Uh, Ukraine plans, uh, you know, to launch their counter-offensive operation. It's announced for spring. So how would you assess its possible outcome? And in your opinion, is Ukrainian army fully equipped to launch this operation and to, especially to achieve the success? So wars are by nature unpredictable. So I think no one can tell exactly now uh, how, and war, uh, how and when this war will end or how this war will evolve uh, throughout this year. Um, and I also strongly believe that it is for Ukrainians who are on the ground, who have the best knowledge uh, to make the uh, decisions on operational issues, uh, um, on, for instance, a new offensive. Uh, our responsibility as NATO and NATO allies is to provide Ukraine uh, with uh, the equipment, the ammunition, uh, the support Ukraine needs to launch new offensives. And that's exactly what NATO allies are doing. Uh, with military support, uh, but also with training, and also now training at high levels, uh, and also, of course, training uh, to be able to use, for instance, some of the new, more modern weapons which allies are now providing, including the battle tanks. How likely is the scenario of uh, frozen front line on the current line, I would say, and uh, how it would affect for the course of the war in this case? As I'm careful speculating about how likely that scenario is, I think that our responsibility is to ensure that it doesn't happen or maximize the like likelihood for that that's not uh, the, the case. Because uh, what we would like to see is, of course, uh, uh, Ukraine uh, being able to liberate more land to push back uh, the, the, the President Putin's soldiers. And then <clears throat> that may create the conditions for some kind of uh, negotiations. Again, it's for Ukraine to decide what are acceptable uh, conditions for negotiations, what are 
acceptable outcome. Uh, but what we know is that what happens around the negotiating table is inextricably linked to the strength of the battlefield. So if we want a negotiated solution where Ukraine prevails as an independent sovereign nation tomorrow, then we need to provide military support uh, today. And the last question, if I may, do you believe that uh, Ukraine would be capable to liberate Crimea militarily and are NATO allies ready to support Ukraine in this way, politically and practically? So we have stated that we are ready to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. Uh, 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 we support Ukraine's right to self-defense uh, or protecting Ukrainian territory. Uh, this is a right which is enshrined in the UN Charter. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, what we see now is a war of aggression against Ukraine, and we support Ukraine's right to self-defense, and we will do that as long as it takes.